Okay, here we are. Um, so, um, as everybody knows, I'm, I'm not anymore, unfortunately, a student. Um, but uh, this is the work of, um, of Matthias, uh, actually a part of the work, and uh, I will try to, uh, to show you the, the big picture be behind that. Um, it would be a kind of um, counter example of, of what we've sh shown, yes, uh, actually Bjorn, Bjorn sh showed us uh, yesterday. So it, it would be quite what happened wrong and uh, what we are trying to, uh, to make it going well. So uh, the idea is uh, about uh, um, developing uh, serious games uh, in, uh, in the field of, of education. So I, I will start the presentation um, talking about shortly the consortiums and the development process we, we tried to think at the beginning, three years ago. And then um, I'll talk about uh, the main concept and, and principle behind that. Um, and then um, what what was uh, the first set of serious games uh, we made, five serious games. And then uh, the issue we, we arrived, I mean, the issue is actually <laughs> exactly what Bjorn said yesterday. Uh, and, and then um, another idea about a serious game platform, a model and some tests and, and the current need. So um, basically, uh, I am from the Ashwark, uh, the Applied University of uh, applied science, and and um, um, I was interested by by working with uh, HEP and Florence uh, will, will be there just uh, in the next session, haute um, école uh, pédagogique, and and I asked them, well, uh, what do you need? And she said, actually, uh, maybe we don't have much money, but for sure uh, we've got plenty of needs, and uh, let's try to work together. So I was very pleased, and oh, let's do something. We we're gonna change the world. And, and uh, what can we do if we have no money? But at least we have students. <laughs> uh, we both are students, so we can make them work <laughs> for free. <laughs> and, and, uh, and actually it worked, because um, then I, I came back, they say, okay, it would be nice to do that. And say, okay, let's try to do that. Let's implement that. And uh, what do you think about it? And um, more or less, okay, yeah, actually it will be nice to do that, let's implement that. And we were doing this loop and never getting out of the loop. And uh, actually this was an issue that you said also, where is the client uh, in the loop? There's no client, it's been three years like that. At least a couple, I think. So, the main idea is we thought about the concept, the conception, uh, for what is, uh, how do you do, uh, uh, something, anything for a kid. How do the kid will 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 create something? Will create a castle, or maybe he's imagining um, making a castle, and then he will plan to do it, and then he will execute something, and maybe he will be happy or not of, of the result. So he will evaluate, and these four processes is the basis of how you make something, anything. That's the first concept. The second one was uh, thinking about not just digital uh, serious game, but much more about um, creating something of it, something concrete, something you can touch, something maybe you can plug to each other and build something else. Um, so from virtual conception to uh, uh, the cr concrete object. So we made all these uh, serious games about that. We made a, a puzzle game, uh, follow-up points, where when you follow up all the right points, you reach uh, and you obtain uh, an image. And then um, uh, what we call the simulation of cube, basically you have a shape and you have to reproduce, reproduce it. And then uh, another game, which was about um, uh, the same thing, but with the shadow, you only have the shadow of it, which was not exactly the same cognitive. Uh, stimulation. And the last one uh, was about recipe and math. So we're trying to um, introduce math concepts and at the same time uh, making something of it, out of it. The first one, we actually used uh, a laser uh, printer 
to uh, to cut the, the part of the, the puzzle. Uh, the uh, second one, we just have uh, a printer to get something out of it. Uh, the third one and fourth one, just use a 3D printer and you've got your object. And the last one, well, you have to do some recipe after out of it and it's very fine. And students were quite happy about that. But uh, actually, it was not working so well. It was like, you said I changed my slides. I actually, I made a slide this morning, <laughs> I must say. The teacher was saying, yeah, 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 that's fine. But I would like it to be like that. And here, yeah, 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 this one is good. This one is good, but not quite. And then the, the friend, or the, the other teacher, the colleague, uh, nah, I don't like it. This is not something I will, I will use in my classroom. And, and then uh, we have, more when the teachers were more or less uh, happy about it, maybe uh, we thought the school would have some issue about it. And then we thought, uh, well, we, have to, we need the approval of the city and then maybe of the canton. And then actually it was not working. So let's say, let's try to do another way. Is to, instead of making just one game and satisfying everybody with it, let's try to make a platform out of it and, and with all very small series games and to see how it's working. So um, that was the work actually of Matthias and uh, it was the first step and, and we, he made actually uh, three games, uh, an, an extra and from another students and we put all these games all together. The first one was uh, more or less uh, like uh, this game, the, the point game, you, you make the contour of something and then you have a a picture arriving, and it was uh, with a ball that, and the ball has to be pushed. The second one was the, another version of the cube, but then you have uh, this little player, and you have to really to think and to manage uh, your stock of cubes uh, to, to manage and to, to, to repeat the form. Uh, the third one was about uh, this, uh, this issue of color. You have, you, have, you have the name of the color, but not in the right color, and you have to put your spaceship in the right place. And, and the fourth one was about uh, making a bridge so that the water will not flow uh, anywhere. With a capture and you have to manage also the, uh, your, your little cubes that you put in this uh, thing. Actually, it's, it's not the bridge, it's um, yeah. dam, sorry, dam. Um, and to make it fit uh, well in the platform itself, we thought of, of um, putting five categories which was uh, inhibition, uh, inhibition, flexibility, planification, attention, and uh, activity to memory. And we try to rate each game and each, uh, each part of each game to all together. And then we have a feedback for the students or the teacher uh, of the success for each of the category, which actually uh, can be uh, quite uh, performant and, and teachers seem to, to, to like this, that part. The feedback from the, the teacher, uh, well, they said there was no creation of real objects and having only this digital word uh, was not uh, satisfying. So the previous idea would be necessary, I think. Then um, it, it remains uh, they, they remain quite afraid of, of using uh, these kind of tools. And uh, especially, uh, they say that um, they don't really know how to fit uh, this course, this, um, this tool in their courses. That's the main issue. But they are still very interested, ask for more tool and, and uh, decide really to be involved. As you said, like 90% of the teachers. Concerning the students, actually, they were very motivated with strong concentration, we observed. Uh, there was no issue uh, in terms of ages because we used um, uh, kids that were like uh, around uh, seven to, uh, to 12 years old, if I'm not wrong. And um, they were helping each other very strongly. And they asked for more and can we take the, the, the game at home? So basically, um, what we need is uh, more development, especially in the part where we create an object, and test time, 
and uh, also we'd like to have uh, at least part uh, with a, a national fund, for instance, uh, an industrial partner. Uh, take a message uh, for the end. Well, uh, it's uh, it's a world of uh, of development that is really hard, much harder than I thought, but not in terms of uh, computer science. Um, and, and the second point could be uh, that we really believe that uh, uh, thinking about what is virtual, what is real, what is reality, and what is an object uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, can I touch it, can I not touch it? It's something that is uh, really um, needed in the future, we think. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> uh, do you have any question? <coughs> Why I is it needed? I mean, we are all going in a virtual world. So uh, why do you think it's need for now to have a concrete object with it? I, I really um, the thing is, is, um, is, um, is uh, more a little bit about uh, philosophy. Um, when we talk about uh, virtual reality, like if I meet someone and they say, oh, what's your job? I'm talking about virtual reality. Oh, yeah, virtual reality, it's something like uh, very far from here, it's uh, strange, or they think about Matrix, and they think maybe about the Avatar and stuff like that, movies. But I believe that uh, uh, actually a uh, virtual world is really already a part, uh, like, like, if I give you the example of uh, your account, your money in the bank, the money is not existing. But for sure, you really believe that you have money in the bank. But actually, you know it's just computer. That's not an issue. So when we're talking about bank, everybody gets more or less the concept. But when we are talking about uh, digital words, serious games, and stuff like that, Usually they think, oh yeah, computers, it's not real, it's, um, it's fake, it's not really existing, it's not really serious. But actually there's, I believe, a very strong link to make between what is real. Um, it makes me think about m when I started my lesson in, in master course of virtual reality, when I was in EPFL, I was uh, always telling everyone, where are you? Where w were you and where will you, will you be? And everybody say, yeah, we are in a classroom and they were just thinking, well, what the hell is that? The only place that you're gonna be is in your head from the day you're born to uh, the day you die. Everything is just an illusion from your senses. And saying that this object is real or not is not, it's not the point. So I think that making um, uh, a bridge that it's not an issue that this object is digital or there's nothing, I mean, it, this digital object is as real as this object from my point of view. And I think that training uh, going in this sense of making the bridge between physical objects and unphysical objects is, is important. Do you answer your question? way of collectible. In, in fact, we are going back in the entertainment when we are, we have these physical toys. We are going to the toys entertainment, to the toys industry, and it's a way to going back to um, a physical thing that you can collect and have in your hand. And um, so I you have different reasons. That is why I asked the question, but I understand. Okay, then. Maybe I can complete because I, I was the part of HEP. Uh, je vais compléter parce qu'en fait, la demande venait du département des activités créatrices et manuelles de la HEP, où on apprend aux élèves à travailler uh, la technique manuelle. C'est une des explications pour lesquelles il y avait la volonté de produire des objets. 
ça c'est un des premiers points, ça s'appelle la demande du client. <coughs> il y avait un client quand même, en tout cas c'est quelqu'un qui a joué le rôle du client, ouais. on peut le dire. Il y avait cette demande-là et euh, l'objectif c'était de, de réfléchir à la conception d'objets, donc au design d'objets. Et l'idée c'est qu'on ne pouvait pas simplement faire du design virtuel sans tester la production réelle de ces objets-là. C'était la raison pour laquelle il y a le désir de créer des objets euh, physiques pour que les élèves soient confrontés à, justement aux, aux limites du virtuel, voir qu'il ne suffit pas de dessiner un modèle, ensuite il faut une matière pour ce modèle. La matière est à construire, les éléments sont à compléter, à mettre ensemble. Donc il y avait euh, toute cette idée derrière, et l'idée c'est les formations techniques, les formations d'ingénieurs, ils ne produisent pas que du virtuel, on ne visait pas du tout les formations informatiques, ça s'intègre sous imprimante 3D dans les formations les ECOM, qui concerne la technologie et, et énormément les HES. Voilà. Um, I, I was, uh, I've been uh, intrigued by the spider graphs, the spider graph you used, uh, and I wonder why it was at the end of the process. Because for me, this is the product that I would show to the teacher to say, okay, this is what I'm gonna help you achieve with your, your kids. You can assess this and then you can measure uh, evolution over time. And I'm gonna give you, uh, for example, this game and this game and this game or activity uh, uh, that will help in planification, in memory, in flexibility. And at the end of the, of the day, when, uh, when the, the student will have go through one, two, three uh, uh, games, we can reassess and show that flexibility has changed over time, et cetera. And uh, uh, moreover, uh, it made me think about why wouldn't this be um, something like a label? You know, we have energy label with A, B, C, D, and we could put on games package, oh, this game is good for planification inhibition. Even if it's not an applied games, I would say, okay, uh, Maybe Counter-Strike would have a great uh, planification number and a very low uh, uh, inhibition, oh, I don't know. And then you can, you can use that flag, that, that, that label to, um, to, uh, to sell better, to, to better sell products, even not applied to, to the audience, to say, okay, you may be uh, low on flexibility, you should m play more games that help you with f flexibility. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Florence could also uh, talk about it. Is, is there any ideas uh, in the teaching about creating such labels or? I just, um, for the first part of your speech, actually this is exactly what it's meant to be. So this is exactly what we, we plan to use. It's, uh, it's a feedback uh, um, that, that is more or less following. But um, for the second part, even the, if the idea is really good, and maybe uh, Florence would be able to, to contribute much better than I do. Um, it's very risky and because you've got all this school of pedagogy and everybody say, oh, this is the stuff, this is the stuff, this is the stuff, and it's very hard for agreeing, everybody will, uh, will agree on something, first, first point. And then the second point and, uh, is about this one here, um, to uh, being able to, um, to tune very subjective subject is extremely hard. Yes, but then again, for each of these numbers, you can always criticize with very good arguments. Um, so, um, well, this is just a test. Maybe one day we'll reach this uh, perfect world when we, 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 we finally understood everything. <laughs> Giving a grade to a student is as uh, uh, um, a flawed as uh, pu putting this on place. Please don't, 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 don't hear that. <laughs> He's wrong. No, no, we no. Have the science. I know. I've been I've been teaching for a long time, but uh, uh, it's you know how it is. Um, at one point, we have to make the mark, and uh, yeah, I know it's subjective. But uh, but uh, I, I believe that maybe it's uh, it's this in this way uh, taking this from the start we may m convince more convince our, our uh, colleagues and and uh, deciders and managers to 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 accept this uh, um, uh, categorization. 
Uh, well, just to explain a bit more, this is not, uh, these are not just criteria. This comes from the theory, the psychological theory of executive functions. So this is a scientific theory that uh, has been studied for a very long time, inhibition, flexibility, all these elements are key elements to achieve an action with a purpose, um, especially actions in long term and complex actions. If, you don't, if you're not able to have some flexibility in adapting your action or to inhibit certain um, behaviors, you will not be able to, to reach your goal. So this is not just something coming from uh, teachers or anything like that. This has been observed on people with brain damages. They cannot do some of these elements. Uh, they cannot uh, planify, reactivate their memory, and things like that. And the idea is to help children uh, to get better on these all these elements, and also to see if some child has big problems with one of these elements and how to help them. But the, the spider chart, I completely agree, is very subjective. You're right, and that's why we don't use it. Uh, it's better to look at uh, how how the child is playing the game, which are the strategies, and where are his own problems. So, yeah, I don't really believe in ch the spider chart, things like that. But you can also watching children playing is a very interesting thing. Okay, thank you a lot, Stefan. <laughs> your station. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this session, we have so a lot of stuff passing from particle physics, going to pedagogy, passing from making uh, cocktails. So, a lot. But one topic that is really important in applied and serious games is health. I think the last uh, speaker today will fill uh, this gap. So, Gaetan Sechaud from APFL, welcome. Thank you.